Hello there, YouTubers. What we have right here is something that you've already seen a long time ago. This was featured in a video that I uploaded back in, I believe, 2008. It was entitled Homemade Electronics. It was kind of a teaser for uh, Dr. Cassette's workshop. And, well, here it is once again. This is a preamplifier that I built in somewhere around 2006, 2007. So this thing's pretty old. It has been around, but it won't be for much longer because it, uh, well, it really has only been standing around. It uh, has not been working since, you know, around 2009, 2010 and it's really just taking up space so I finally decided that I'm going to get rid of it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video just to kind of document this, how it looked, and I'm also going to take the opportunity and tell you a little bit about uh, well what this uh, what this is all about, what makes this thing kind of special, and what were the problems with this because uh, <laughs> there were quite a few of those. Anyway, we zoom in on the front. You can see it's uh, not the most uh, fancy uh, kind of thing. On the left, you can see there's a power switch that uh, used to be. It's no longer there. I did intend to replace it because it was having problems with sparks. You could hear that in the audio signal each time you turn on the thing or turn it off. Of course, nowadays I know that a little capacitor across it would have solved the problem, but um, back then I was going to replace the power switch, but never actually did it. Here we have the input selector, and that is uh, connected to these four LEDs. We have four inputs for tuner, tape, phono, and auxiliary. And the phono is, in fact, a phono input. There is a little preamplifier in this. We have a little uh, four-position rotary switch on there. Here we have some more holes. These were originally for a set of microphone inputs. The two lower jacks would have uh, taken a pair of uh, three and a half millimeter mini mono plugs. The upper thing, I believe, would have been a power switch. Anyway, um, that thing I could never get to work, so those holds remained unoccupied. Moving on, we have bass and treble controls, balance control, and then uh, finally, volume control. Here we have the back of the unit. As we zoom in, you see all the way to the left we have the phono inputs. Up above we have a banana jack which is for the phono ground, which really is just uh, a connection straight to the ground of, uh, of the whole entire unit. There we have, well, usually I'd say those are the line level inputs, but uh, I will be explaining that later on. These are not line level inputs. But there they are, tape, tuner, and auxiliary, all properly labeled. Not very neatly, though. And there we have the outputs. We have a record output and the pre-amplifier output, a nice crack in the wood, and this is remains of uh, when this was uh, supposed to become a an, an all-in-one integrated amplifier. That uh, was the cutout for the uh, speaker terminals. Now we have, of course, our power input. And up there, that is another thing that uh, I never actually did. There was a hole behind it there that was supposed to take a DIN jack. Anyway, now we can finally take a look inside. Here we have the inside of the unit. Of course, this is all made out of wood. So, uh, <laughs> absolutely no shielding whatsoever. Which uh, you did notice, this thing had a terrible problem with uh, background noise. It would just pick up everything. Anyway, let's go from left to right. Here we have the transformer. It's a, uh, a, a dual 12 volt transformer, so we we're getting 12 volts and 24 volts out of this. This is what remains 
uh, the power supply. Um, this thing right here, um, this actually went into a, uh, a 7812 regulator right here. So this is only fuse rectifier and smoothing capacitor, all taken from another circuit board, as you can no doubt see. Um, this thing came out of a little power brick thing. And this, I believe, this is actually the first capacitor that uh, exploded on me, ever. I don't know, that, that capacitor, I think it was like 25 volts, 25 volt rating. I was putting 24 volts into the thing. <laughs> and uh, as you all know, if you rectify AC, it, um, the voltage rises. So that thing didn't last very long until it went pop. So I replace it with that capacitor right there. So uh, that's the input selector. As you can see, there is only power wiring on this input selector. No shielded audio cables. Why is that? Well, that is because we have a relay control for the inputs. Now this is a circuit board that a friend of mine found in the trash and gave to me. And uh, this contains a bunch of little relays, 24 volts, unfortunately, which, you know, it's kind of, a, kind of an odd value. And I redid the circuit board a little bit so that um, basically every input has three relays, left, ground, and right. Now, it would have been more intelligent to just connect the grounds all the time. That really doesn't matter, you know, because obviously then you would have had a lot more inputs available. This is some uh, hideously failed attempt at uh, trying to get rid of uh, hum. I thought it was coming through the inputs, so this is some sort of a uh, some sort of a filtering network that I uh, just copied from uh, from another circuit that I saw, and uh, I'm pretty sure this thing this thing just didn't do anything. But uh, here we have the uh, inputs from the other side. There you can see the hole for the uh, DIN jack. There is that. The uh, record output is just hooked up in parallel to the uh, output of this uh, relay control, so there is no electronics related to that at all. Anyway, the, uh, the phono goes into this circuit board. This came out of a compact stereo, a silver brand compact stereo. And uh, there is a phono preamplifier part in this. So I use that. It's, uh, you know, it comes in right there and uh, outputs right there. So that goes into the relay control right there. The output of the relay control, which I believe is right there, then goes in here. This is the thing. This, uh, the silver stereo system, internally was working with DIN jack levels. And of course, if you have DIN jacks, you don't w want to just simply replace them with RCA jacks like I did on this thing. Is it ain't gonna work. You have a level mismatch, you have an impedance mismatch, yeah, it's just not a very good idea. So at first this thing ended up te being terribly sensitive. You know, you would turn the volume control up just a little bit and it was already blasting. So I finally, and that's why this wire goes under that circuit board, I bypassed this first uh, stage right here. This uh, is just a simple single transistor stage. I bypass that, and that kind of solved the problem with the levels. Everything else on here, of course, is, uh, you know, that just remains unmodified. You get the tone controls, balance control. The output then just goes straight to the output jack. The problem, the big problem was I didn't have a voltage regulator for the power supply of the relays. So all the noise and all the hum going through the coils of those relays, I mean, they would work, but all the noise and all the hum would just go straight into the signal that these relays was, were switching. So 
Yeah, as I already said, this thing had a terrible problem with noise. It just had tons and tons and tons of hiss and hum and whatever. So, well, it's going. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.